one day in Malaga, Spain. If you're coming in on a cruise ship, we're going to show you what you want to see and do. We need to see eh, the old town of Malaga. Thanks for joining us on another journey. Today we're in Malaga, Spain. If you're new to the channel, this is April and I'm Wayne and we have Javier with Explora Malaga, the experts in travel and tourism when you get there. So sit back, relax and enjoy the journey. Day 11 and we're in the city of Malaga in Spain. So how old is Malaga? Do you know? Let me guess it. Uh, 2000? Wasn't it over 2,000 years old? Yeah. yeah. 2,770 this is the oldest part of the town. I want just to show you this a picture. Okay. I used to look to Malaga in 1999, all this corner around oh. here. Malaga used to be an industrial city, horrible traffic, really noisy. This is a kind of new street who was built just some years ago by the Larios family. The name of this street, actually, you can see Calle Marquez de Larios. Larios is a family name, really a rich family, that they moved from the north of Spain, from La Rioja. They moved into here to invest their money in the industries. But the most important ones around 1850s used to be a textile industry factory, an alcoholic drink factory, and a sugar cane plant factory. Larios family bought then eh, all the houses that used to be around here with the help, of course, of the mayor, but also all the houses you see in the right and the left. They bought it all, destroyed it all, and rebuilt it, as you can see. Because of that, all the houses, you pay attention, looks exactly the same way. All of them built in 1891, and all of them built yeah. by the same architect, Strachan. Most interesting thing. A rounded corner. Yeah, too. Quite rounded. It's more beautiful, it's more modern, but also, it's easier to walk around. It's easy to drive when we used to have cars, for example. Uh. Also, we keep the city cooler, because the wind blow better, and also, we can say cleaner, because dogs can't be on the corner. The only problem nowadays, as you can see, that most of the shops now are international brands. Right. Like that, we preserve some local stores. This famous kiosk that have been actually selling this paper for 40 years. The oldest shop around here is Casa Mira. The ice cream place was founded in 1890. I don't think I've ever been to an older ice cream place. <laughs> really sorry, but now it's closed, so you need right. to come back later. Oh, too bad. April said we're gonna find the wine, the ice cream, and oh, the tapas. Yes. <laughs> well, I can even skip the ice cream if I get the wine and the tapas. Here in Malaga, they're known for tapas, which is small plates. Try a little bit of Spain. This is where we're at. The traditional drink here is vermouth. They look exactly the same. I don't know the difference. Oh, oh, uh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. It's got like spice, undertone. Oh, okay, they are different. We can taste the soda in that one, I think. And I also got a cerveza to go with it. And we got some beautiful olives. It's like a green olive, but that is like in your face. But these are amazing. Yeah, that's good. A light seafoody taste, cold. It's cold. Yeah. Oh. Um, you know, octopus is delicious. And put the bread. Oh, the breads of Europe. This is a Russian potato salad. It has potatoes in it. Very light and creamy. The herbs up on top just kind of complement it. This is the Bishop Square. Look at this. Amazing buildings. We have two important buildings. Of course, every cathedral made a bishop and the Bishop of Malaga lives here. Now we have a nice gallery, the first and the second floor. It's a very important building with no doubt, that, the cathedral. How old was that? Ooh, that's a hard question, how old? Now exactly the moment when they start to build it. But the hard question is, when did they finish? <laughs> they start to build the cathedral in 1528, but take a look to the cathedral and compare it with the original idea, the original plan. Oh. What is missing? Can you recognize it? The whole top right. Top right, the tower, also the middle part, the statue decorations, yeah. and even the rooftop. Whenever build the rooftop of wood for the water, really slow the construction of the cathedral. Close to 250 years to build it. Quite so slow. Actually, we can say in few words that at the same time they build the body, they also spend the money inside. Especially the choir, something that actually they invest close to 120 years to get built. A Spanish choir that made it in the middle 
Oh, wow. something incredible. Most of the statues made by Pedro de Mena, something amazing and totally worth it to see. And finally, in the year 1782, they stopped the construction. They decided to invest that money in other places. Mm. Not to finish the cathedral, not to finish the tower, but to finish something more, more important, the port and new roads. Mm. To connect Malaga with Antequera, with Belle, Malaga. So they thought, if we improve the communications, we will improve the economy. Like that, we will recover the money in some years, then we can finish. And we put a nickname to it, we call it La Manquita, because of the tower missing. What's the meaning of La Manquita? The one-armed lady. Oh, yeah. It's a strange name, but yeah. we love nicknames. Yeah. What's the real name? Incarnation Cathedral. If you don't know what's the incarnation, it's represented in the middle. Angel Gabriel on the right and Mary on the left on the Holy Spirit in the middle. That's the incarnation moment when Angel Gabriel said to Mary, Mary you will be yes. mother of God. And Mary right. said, yes, why not? Okay. Of course. It's the first door that Christians build in a temple here. When Isabella and Ferdinand, king and the queen of the Christian conquer Malaga in 1487, they have to convert everything from mosque into cathedrals. And this one, the most important doors, they open on the old mosque to convert it and because of that they choose this style this gothic style totally different from the other style we just saw in the cathedral yeah is this building attached to the church yeah yeah we're going to see even better later wow. in the corner now it's not a mosque okay. since the moment the christian get it they just convert it every time you have muslim and christian architecture mix it it's called mudeja that's a good point of what is mudeja look at the door it's like a gothic arch yeah. decorations around but that's not gothic look at the window in the first floor it's totally in muslim it's style it's but in the second one it's that's the gothic so that mix isabella choose an old style gothic style why of course there's a message on here reasons they can't represent people they can represent animals they can represent animals. the more statues you put the more gothic style the more christian and the less muslim will be mm -hmm. so, but now let's see the old door to the cathedral yeah for sure yeah. So this is the perfect spot why because here you can see the two temples now better in the right the most look at this look at the ceilings oriental style can you recognize it this looks more Muslim, of course, and then they the left the cathedral. As you can see, just there together, that cathedral looks and works as lighthouse to call the attention of the people to come inside the house of God. Mosques are simple because the beauty is for the house, is for the families. So you don't have to show that. Atarazanza's market was originally a Moorish shipyard where you find all sorts of things. It's fun going to the local markets anytime you go to a different country. The rest of the world has so much better foods than what we have. We have two different kind of local fish, sardines and anchovies. Same family, different size. As you can see, Bocaroni on one side and the sardine over there. Oh, look, you got some unusual fish here. You got, uh, that's a monk fish, you know? And then that was a grouper, I think. I always like coming to any kind of traditional type market. If I was living down here, I would totally be here getting some fish every night for dinner. Yeah, with the guide, we were looking at them shaving the, the pig's legs. The more fat is better or less fat is better? The most important thing is not how much fat, but where it is. It must be in the middle, like fibers. They cut it as thin as possible, that's the only important thing. And all the olives. That was impressive. The food just looks so amazing. I honestly wish we would have bought a lot of little things to try. I don't know why we didn't. I think it was because I was already full. Have you ever had a churro in Malaga? You have got to try some of the hot chocolate and fresh churros. I don't even feel like you can call them churros. Oh my. And same with the with the chocolate, the dipping sauce that Wayne decided to try to drink. Oh my lord, that is sugar chocolate. <laughs> I thought it was like a, a hot chocolate like you would have in America. Uh, churros have a long history in Spain. It dates way back to the 16th century where the Spanish shepherds they would fry the batter over open fires in the countryside. Do you know where the name churro came from? It's from the churro sheep, whose horns may resemble the twisted shape. What do you think about eating your way through Malaga? We've had the churros and then the tapas so far. Very good. Walking through the market was amazing as well. Yes. I could have easily bought a bunch of fish and taken it home and fried it up. Picasso's birthplace. He was born there on October 25th, 1881. Why we speak about Picasso right here on those beautiful streets? We have a lot of things here in connection with Picasso. First of all, of course, it's museum, Palacio de los Condes de Buenavista. We have a nice collection and it's actually presented in an interesting way in a kind of chronological order to see the evolution uh -huh. of the painting of Picasso. For me it's even more important, this one here, this building that now is ruined and destroyed. Why? This is the place where Picasso 
become an artist. Why this building is so popular for Picasso? This yellow building used to be the school of Picasso when he was a baby. He ran away from there every day since he was five years old to be with his father. Because over there, his father, Jose Ruiz Blasco, used to paint, used to restore the old paints because his father was also an artist. What his father teach to him the classic, the academic style. He painted, for example, this when he was 15 years old. Oh, Ciencia wow. y Caridad. This painting is something maybe unusual for the people that know Picasso. It's a totally different Picasso, isn't it? What happened then? He got bored. He got tired, we can say. He wanted to discover something different. He moved to France, to Paris, to Montmartre. And over there, he started to paint. In a totally different way, of course, start the new period. How we call this period? What about the colors? They're blue tones. So it's called like that. Yeah. The blue period. Picasso in that time was depressed. It was hard for Picasso to meet people at the beginning. He couldn't speak French properly. It was a bit complex. Uh, but he could use, of course, to the place and start to enjoy life and start to make some money and start to meet new artists. He fell in love several times. And start the new period. What's the name of this period? Remember. We have the blue period, so this would be the orange, orange period, pink period, red period, warmer period. There are a lot of artists around Paris. I want to become the most modern of all the artists. And as you know, he with his friend Braque and a lot of different artists, they start to create new styles, eh? to mix. Eh? And Picasso gets a lot of influence from these different artists, especially from Paul Cezanne, eh? from the African art even, and working in Bateau la Bois. Eh? They created something different, something new, and something that the people love with the past of the time. Something that I'm sure you know, yes. that you can recognize. Yes. And not just you, you, but close to everybody in the world. Probably one of the most important things of Picasso, he creates a style that everybody can recognize. It's interesting also, being so popular, everybody knows the paintings of Picasso and the style of Picasso, but it's a pity that nobody knows his real name, his full name. So, of course, in this place, his birthplace, it's time to learn that. Maybe you know the full name of Picasso or no? Yes, few people know. Pablo. Yes, good. Pablo is the first Pablo name. Picasso. Picasso is the last, but there's yes. something in the middle. I do not know. If you don't know, don't worry. Nobody knows. <laughs> full name is Pablo Diego. Diego. Jose, Jose Francisco de Paulas Juan. Nepomuceno Maria de los Remedios Cipriano de la Santísima Trinidad Ruiz Picasso. No wonder nobody knows the name. <laughs> Something popular, we're still doing that in Spain, not so often, but usually royal families, rich families, uh, artists, people that want to preserve the legacy, they take the names of the grandfather, the grandmother, the uncle, and they put it to their baby, the kids. This is supposed to be the oldest ice cream here in Malaga. What do you want to Whatever the Malaga is, it's like doing a mystery flavor. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Right. Okay, folks. I have no idea what's in this because I don't remember what he said. I'm tasting the raisin. It's not as weird as you would think. It's not as bad as you would think. So far, it's just raisin and vanilla but it's a good vanilla, like, it is better than that stuff on the ship. You know, we like Roman theaters. One of the best places we went to was the Roman Theater of Malaga. Here we can enjoy the views of the theater oh, from yeah. the top. Yeah, the best part about this is it doesn't cost anything to get in. One of the first things to remember is that this is a theater and not an amphitheater. What's the difference? The amphitheater is rounded, isn't it? For the gladiators yes. fights, fight against animals. Theater is healthy, cool. We found the theater just some years ago in 1951. You take a look to the level of the ground, as you can see, and you keep it straight, mostly everything will be covered. We still have buildings right here. We have some pictures of that time. Oh. We still have, as you can see, this building used to be right here. Oh. And then the theater. As you can see, divided into three parts. The cabia for the seats, the whole circle, quite well preserved. The stage and wood rebuilt on the bottom. And this is missing, the backstage. We must have here a little wall. Actually, 11 yeah, centuries later, Muslims took everything they wanted from here to build the fortress. As you know, seats used to be divided according to the statues, isn't it? Royal families, rich families. Where they sit? The front for yeah, the front best seats. Yeah, it's poor and slaves. If they are lucky, they can come to the theater. Yeah, yeah. The top. What about the palcos? What about the balconies? Nowadays, something prestigious, something expensive. The early palcos used to be right there, as you can see on the top. 
of the vomitorium of the entrance and used to be usually restricted to women. What's the theater for? Of course, uh, to do theater, to do shows, to do opera, to do events. But also, the most important thing, to convert the people into Roman citizens. It's Malaga was a federated city of the Roman Empire. And it's because they, they used to have a lot of things here. They loved to export minerals, copper, iron, and salt. The main entrance is a tiny entrance. We expect something big. Small door, easier to control and easier to defend because also it's in a corner. It means they have more angle to shoot down to the enemies. And after that door, what you have? A second door, and a third, and a fourth, and a fifth. And then you start the labyrinth, doing the thick fact to the top. And those kind of doors are built to protect as less as possible. A kind of open, isn't it? Door. How this works? Long steps. Hard to do, especially for the people that have the full armor. They will get trapped in this hole. They can move their arms, they can attack properly. And maybe you're thinking, jumping the walls makes no sense. Why don't just make a tunnel dig, pass under it? Maybe it's easy when you have one wall. When you have so many walls and everything, as you can see, it's in a solid rock, something right. close to impossible. So the most important doors of the area were built with a special wood that came from Lebanon. See there, actually. The main point is about taste. The main problem we have with the wood is insects. It's so sour that neither the insects will eat it. So as you can see, corners and corners, because actually those are the perfect places to defend this place. You have double advantage here. You are attacking from the right to the left. So that means the shield in the left, the sword, the mace, the axe in the right. I can attack properly. I have this corner in the middle. So yeah, or if I attack, I can defend my body. It's not so easy. Second advantage, always, always try to attack from the top to the bottom. Weakness part of the bodies of which they have. The Muslims have been recycling materials from all around, like Roman theater. Some of them stones would be hard to actually recognize if they are around here, mixed it with the solid brick, so popular from the Muslims. But maybe, we guess the white part, the marble parts, maybe some of them came from the Roman theater. But some other pieces are extremely clear where they come from. You take a look at those columns around there, yeah. or those one around here. How much older is the theater than the fortress? 900 years older. And this gets converted into a neighborhood. And the poorest families of Malaga used to live here up to the year 1940s. This picture proves how all those families build the houses around here, mm. right on the top of the walls. So in some way we can say that maybe because of that, the Alcazar was so well preserves a lot of people were involved in that change to convert this neighborhood into a into a monument but we have to mention someone we have of course to remark the name of Juan Tembri. in 1985 it was like finished and opened as a monument we're still on the first floor and after that door we will go in the second floor that means the citadel where most of the people used to live that door has a special design when muslims build a door they put a key on it there's a legend that said that if the keys of they fall to the ground everything will collapse you have the arch right here craving there's a key upside down can you see it the key is in the arch yeah. oh yeah actually the key. in the architecture that stone is called the keystone this is the one that you yes. pour the whole way if you remove oh. that stone up the door it of collapse and now it makes sense second level uh, and we're still having here different things. Where are we going to now to see the Patio de Armas? And also things like this. The place where, first of all, they preserve the grain. Oh. But after that, when the war starts, what they have here? Not grain, not food, but it's dark, it's cold. Wine? Slaves. Oh. It's a dungeon. Oh. But if you keep wine, they will be quite happy. That is shape is not like a tunnel, it's like a cone. So like yeah. it's impossible to climb to escape. So all this area is called Patio de Armas. Patio, you know what the meaning of Patio de Armas? Armas means weapon. That means the big weapon used to be around here. The cannons, the catapults, to protect the harbor, to protect the coastline. Because remember, at the sea level, you used to reach the beginning of this mountain. So you used to reach up to this way. Guards and the people that help royal families used to live here. The towers all around here, like Tower de la Vela, uh, used to be used to control but also to send signals. All around Andalusia, and of course Spain, we have towers in the middle of nowhere, on the top of the mountains, beside the coastline. Uh, so like that, when the enemy is coming, they can make a fire, and as you know, the next tower around, we also make a fire, and they move extremely fast the communication. It's all different architecture and different systems, and this is something that 
actually is new. We have the double wall, as you can see. One door will be here, the other wall will be exactly where April is. And what's the problem? When you try to attack to the second door, well, they arrow you to death. Exactly. <laughs> they throw you stuff. They throw need... rocks on you or yeah. gas or oil. I guess it would have been oil back then, right? Exactly. In the corner, the wall, as you can see, they're rounded. It's easier when it's rounded, oh. like this. Point to, down. Oh, to use the building to support the arrow so yeah. you can hold it longer. And it's easy actually if you have a corner, imagine how hard it will be. Oh, yeah. From there. Okay. So, as you can see, all the walls, the exterior parts, they are around the Alhambra Palace beside Malaga in Granada. It was the last capital of the Muslims yeah. in the end of the Reconquest. Granada is pretty close to here. And as you can see, here is where the families used to coexist and live one each other. In these common areas is where they used to meet. And also, every time we have a meeting, they have a meeting with enemies. Every part of the meeting will be one side of the pool. They can speak, they can discuss, but they never will fight. I would love to show you the balconies to enjoy the views. We will okay. do it around here. Okay. The level of the ground is quite far. So that means that cannons, catapults go further. Really attractive for you. So if you want to attack with that kind of weapon, you need to reach a place like Iger. There is only one place I give them. This fortress is the mountain Gibraltar. Muslims noticed that problem. 300 years after they built the Al Kathaba, they built the second fortress, the Gibraltar Castle, on the top of the mountain, and they connect both fortresses with a wall to mm. move the troops in a safer way from Al Kathaba to Gibraltar. So like that, we can say that Christians they couldn't shoot properly, they couldn't dig. Yeah, they couldn't burn this place, it's mainly stones, rocks, bricks. How they conquer this place? That's a good question. Yes, it's impossible to conquer. The only way is just we cut them off at the source. Until the full run out, start the them out, do a siege. After three months and 11 days, the 18th August of 487, Muslims, they have to surrender. They have to mm. come out and ask for the peace. Mm. The war was over. Oh, wow, y'all, that Spanish wine. Oh, my, that is good. When you drink wine out of the country, it always tastes better. It's just something happens to it when it gets transported to the United States, but it never tastes as good as it does when it's here. The local traditional red and the local traditional white. Going with the white first. Mm. Oh, just from the smell. Oh, yeah. It has a note of citrus with an undertone of bubbly with a refreshing crisp aftertaste. It's not sweet at all. It's very nice and dry. It goes a little deeper. It's great. Some berry, chocolatey. Oh, that smells good. Sweet. I'm super sweet. Wow. That is intense, sweet flavor. Port day is over. We're heading back to the ship. I think Wayne has drunk some brain cells away. He's had some troubles today. That's because I've been sleeping for 10 days on a cruise. <laughs> I don't know what to do with not doing anything for eight days. We want to thank you guys for watching our video all the way to the end. If you would, hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend, and like always, thank you for living life. Oh, what's up? <laughs>